Hi there, and welcome to another game show edition of Consume the Goodness. I'm your host, Hosty. To tiptoe or not to tiptoe, that's the name of the game. In this game, our contestants will be given three scenarios. They will either tiptoe or not tiptoe. When they reach the end, depending on how far along they are, they will reach an envelope. But what will be in the envelope? That's the question. Before we get started, a word from our producer. Hey you guys, so so happy you decided to come back for another game show edition of Consume the Goodness. I just wanted to take a brief moment to remind everybody to please keep an open mind as you watch this game show today. I am here to tell the truth and to help you because I love you guys and I love Christ and for no other reason, period. I care about your salvation and I care about your health and that is why I do these videos. Please keep that in mind, please remember that and please keep an open mind as you watch this video. I hope that you laugh and learn and I hope that you keep coming back for more. Back to the show! All right, contestants, here we go. Scenario number one, your obese friend tells you they believe they can be overweight and healthy, why they don't have high blood pressure or even diabetes. Now you know better. What do you do? Do you agree with them to avoid possibly hurting their feelings? Or do you tell them, no, that's incorrect? Let's get you healthy. Contestant number one, I would just go along with it. That's my friend. I love them. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. What? No, I would help them get healthy because I love them. The only way you can even really possibly be considered healthy and overweight or obese is if you were actively doing things to be healthy. So like regular exercise, proper sleep, proper water intake, eating high nutrient dense foods, the proper amount or you know proper amount of high nutrient dense foods. Otherwise I would tell them the truth out of love that it's dangerous to have that much extra fat, to have the visceral fat all around your organs and the ectopic fat all in your organs that it could be killing them. And so I would lovingly tell them that and I would offer to help them get on a healthy track any way that I could. Scenario number two. Every Friday, Pastor Stuart Guthrie of Family Bible Fellowship preaches the gospel live on Telegram. You invite a family member every week to join in and listen or at the very least catch a recording on one of his podcasts. Your family member comes over one day, they're hanging out, and says they're already going to heaven based on all of their good works. Do you say, okay, you understand, and you go about your day knowing good and well those good deeds aren't going to get them to heaven? Or do you tell them about real salvation? Well, I don't want to offend anyone or make anybody mad. And what if they stop talking to me? I wouldn't want to ruin their relationship. I would just keep my mouth shut, stop inviting them to Gospel Friday, stop talking about the gospel at all, and leave it at that. Okay, what? That is nuts But Clearly that person was misled somewhere because Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 makes it perfectly clear that we are not saved based on our good deeds. Salvation is 100% by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. I mean, shoot, in this scenario, that per this family member is at my house, right? So I would just whip out my phone, pull up a Gospel Friday recording and say, okay, well, let's listen to it together and then let's see what you think and see if you have any questions. And for all we know, that's probably going to lead to a salvation prayer here in the gospel romans 10 17 believing john 3 16 confessing sins and repenting first john 1 9 acts 3 19 proclaiming that jesus is the son of god romans 10 9 and 10 oh, crap we could even go farther than that and get baptized ah maybe a little mark 16 16 and then staying in god's word oh, ah! titus 2 12 romans 12 2 bam all right, contestants, last scenario. You have a thin friend. They eat total junk all the time, but they don't overeat it, which is why they stay so small. Now they've just been given a diagnosis of high blood pressure and diabetes, and they disagree with the instruction they've been given to change their eating habits and start exercising. Those things won't help me, they say. I've got a body like a model. I don't need to do those things, they say. Do you lie to them and tell them they're right? Or do you tell them they should change their eating habits and exercise? Well, I would say that usually when you think of someone with high blood pressure or diabetes, usually large and that person isn't, 
So I would just agree with them. It's easier and it keeps the peace. Oh, good grief. Lying to someone about their health does not help anyone. Would you tell a perfectly healthy person you're dying? No. And what does being thin have anything to do with it anyway? I'm, I smoke 10 packs a day and I start mixing drinks for breakfast and I have a case of beer for all through the day and I have wine at, at bedtime, but I'm thin. Okay, no, that person would still be completely unhealthy besides just like somebody who's overweight or obese and doesn't have heart palpitations or high blood pressure or diabetes or heart disease or something like that. Just because you don't have those things doesn't mean you're completely healthy. You still have all of the dangerous fat all around your organs, which makes it hard to be actual healthy. So no, I would tell that person that you can still be unhealthy and thin. And I would really encourage healthier eating habits and regular exercise. And I would help them do that in any way that I could. Bonus round. All right, contestants, you've already been handed your envelopes, but before you open those, we're giving you a bonus question. Get this right and you'll be an owner of this here, Ove Glove. With an Ove Glove, you don't get burned in the kitchen. Here's your question. How can you be a perfect Christian? Oh, this is easy. To be a perfect Christian, you need to be kind and loving and selfless. Pray often, pray for others. Get in God's word, slow to anger, don't be a cheating line jerk face, be patient. All those, all those good things will make you a perfect Christian. <laughs> okay, well, all of those things are good things to be as a Christian, but no. How can we be a perfect Christian? We can't. We're all sinners who fall short of the glory of God. We need to simply strive to do our best to walk in the spirit and to live in the spirit, to be in Christ, to do our best to deny the flesh and Pick up his cross and follow him. We cannot be perfect. We cannot be perfect. It is all Jesus. By grace, through faith in Christ. Period. We cannot be perfect Christians. Oh, she even had some Galatians 2.20 action going on in there. Contestant number two, you are the winner of this here fancy of glove. All right, contestants, the time has come for you to read us the contents of your envelopes. You are a tip-toer. Wah, wah. You would rather allow others be comfy in harmful lies than temporarily uncomfy in helpful truths. Recommendation. Work on being respectfully, comfortably uncomfortable if it means helping others. Oh, you let dogs in the show. <laughs> How sweet. <laughs> oh, you were given some great advice there. Contestant number two, what is your say? <laughs> okay. You are not a tiptoer. Yippee skippy. You would rather risk temporary discomfort to tell truths that could lead to real living. Recommendation, don't stop learning. Don't stop helping when you can. Stay humble. A word from our producer. Hey you guys, I just wanted to take a moment of remembrance of the lives lost 20 years ago today on September 11th, 2001. As well as all who grieve an anniversary of lives of friends and family members lost. I would also like to show my respect by honoring all of the first responders. Firefighters, police officers, paramedics, EMT, all of you guys. And also just to recognize that the people who did lose loved ones on that day, they don't only remember on this day and they don't only grieve on this day and that our first responders shouldn't only be recognized and highly respected on this day. Those who lost loved ones on this day in 2001 grieve their loss every day and our first responders do heroic things every day. Things that most of us could not handle. The things that you all see and hear and smell and experience things that would traumatize most of everybody else, but you guys keep going out there and you do it every single day. And I have a huge amount of respect for you. So my heart goes out to all who have lost and my respect goes out to all first responders. God bless you guys. 
All right, folks, that's our show. Obviously, people can die from anything. You can be fit as a fiddle and still be ill by an unfortunate complication or accident. But if we've got the ability to live our best, well, then let's do it. Contestant number two, you are quite knowledgeable today. Do you have any final messages to educate our audience? Uh, yeah. A little bit of dawn goes a long way. A little bit of dawn does go a long way. Thank you all for tuning in to another game show edition of Consume the Goodness. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but most importantly, share to get a good message out there. And get closer to God. Click the links in the description for Pastor Stuart Guthrie, Jennifer Guthrie, and for Sweet Miss Patty Gable. God bless you all and hope to have you back on the next one.